Hey, this is Tim Barn from Brain Dead. You're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I am Nasty Neal. This is Annabelle Lecter. Yes. And we're joined by the director of Dead Snow, Dead Snow 2, Tommy Workola. How are you doing tonight? I am doing fine, thank you. How about yourself? Ah, oh, very well, very well. Excellent. You know, I love the uh, the poster for for Dead Snow 2. Uh, how much input do you have on uh, on like the design of the poster and the uh, and the and the artwork on on the the DVD? Uh, which one was this? There's been a few different ones. Which one was the? Well, I like all, but I like the one where it's it's uh, like the severed arm and the blood, and it's into the swastika. Ah, okay, okay. Well, actually, well, in Norway and in Europe, I mean, when the, when we make the film and we just our little company and distributors in Norway, where everything is coming from, we decide, and we and we have a big hand in everything when it comes to posters and trailers and stuff like that. But when we sell it on and. Uh, this in this case is the American distributor. Um, they make stuff and they just send it for us for approval. But they they are kind of the ones that are taking the lead there, and we just say if we hate something or love something. And that was an idea that they came up with, which I obviously loved, like you did. Um, but it was uh, I give full credit to the distributor here in the U.S. Oh, very cool. <clears throat> I also like the tagline of uh, the sequel you did not see coming. Yeah, <laughs> that was also them. I I mean. We 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 had a uh, we had a tagline for the first one that was Ein Schwei Die, and that was our tagline, which we really was really ha- we're really happy with. But this was uh, again their idea, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, it uh, it's a good one. Yes, definitely. Now, obviously, uh, Dead Snow had a you know has a huge following. Uh, what has the reaction been like so far with uh, the fans of the first film uh, to the sequel? Um. Well, it seemed like people are, are really pleased with the sequel. And, and like you said, it, you know, the first one came out in 2009, and it, it has grown a lot since then, uh, slowly but surely, and it's become this, this thing, I guess, uh, within the zombie genre. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we were excited and anxious when we released this one because it is very different in, in one way. It's like the last 20 minutes of this new one, and it's how it's, this one starts, and it's takes off from there mm-hmm. uh, and it's basically no horror left it's more like i guess army of darkness just in tone that they don't go for the horrors anymore but more over action and humor and and gore mm-hmm. um but it seems like people appreciate it and uh, they like the fact that we just didn't do a, a repeat of the, the original one i guess or just did the same thing over again that we but like that we try something new mm-hmm. Yeah, it's completely different. You go from a very small, isolated group of people, which uh, it's a very slow build, and then you have just this total craziness, uh, very public. It has police involved and and local things and the guys in the newspaper. And it's so crazy and over-the-top silly. It really just, it's constant, whereas, like I was saying, the other one is more of a slow build. How do you feel about transitioning from one to the other? Um, well, I, to be honest, the the first one, my what I like the best is the is the last part of the first one where I really can combine horror and uh, especially action and gore and humor. And I always love those films where you can go back and forth and and have people be disgusted one moment and laugh the other. Um, mm-hmm. and so my goal was always, uh, I always said to the guys, if we ever do a sequel, I want to make, I want to make it like the end of the first one and just, and, and more, I, I want it to be a nonstop, you know, start with the pedal to the metal and then just, and just go up from there. Um, and it was a challenge, but a fun challenge just to see how we can sustain that tempo and to, uh, and to, and, and to construct it in a way. So it's just like a one big, I mean, not big action sequence, but it's more like a, a a ride, I guess, a fast ride. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a like another a big difference is that you use English through the vast majority of this movie. You even bring some Americans on the scene. So, what? Obviously, this is going to appeal to an American audience. But why make that transition? Well, when we thought about it, it was actually not. It was not uh, like a big idea of, of getting a better release or more money. It was simply because. I think it was already in 2010 when we opened the film in the U.S. or late 2009, and we heard about these group of people called the Zombie Squad, and there were actually a bunch of people, real people here in the U.S. that train and prepare themselves mm-hmm. for a zombie outbreak. 
And we just thought, mm-hmm. well, that's, that's if we ever do a sequel, that's that's too good not to use. <laughs> um, but then we got closer to production, and and we realized we we're going to need a lot of money compared to the first one to make this film. And then it was just all right. So let's let's write these characters in a, in a big way and and see if we can cast somebody in them so that we can uh, get a little bit more money to to make the film. And so it started out some for somewhere creative, but eventually we also realized it's going to help us in getting the movie made, the, the version we wanted to get made and get the money. Mm-hmm. When you when you heard about those people that uh, like the zombie preppers who prepare for the zombie apocalypse, what uh, what did you think about that? Uh, I, I think that was uh, <laughs> funny and fascinating. Um, and uh, they haven't really been honest because we've crapped all over them before. <laughs> so I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I said, you can be really honest, because we crapped all over them before. So, I did uh, No, we did on the no, show. No, we did. We have. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Well, I, I, I mean, I got to know them a little bit, and they're, they, have a, they have a sense of humor about it. They're, in the beginning, we thought they were just like radical people training <laughs> with weapons and being very serious about it, but it's more like a fun organization, I think. Uh, oh, okay. But, um, but I don't know. We just thought, okay, this is a great way to bring America into the foil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are, are zombies as uh, big in, in Norway as they are here? Uh, no. No, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the Dead Snow was the first zombie film ever made in Norway. Oh, okay. Um, and Dead Snow too. I mean, uh, yeah, there hasn't been anything since, and we, yeah, it's not, it's not, but I, they, I mean, Norway, Walking Dead, for example, is it, very popular in, in Norway, so uh, it is certainly a thing there as well, but. Yeah, we were kind of breaking the ground a little bit in Norwegian standards when we made the first one. Mm-hmm. I assume you must have grown up watching uh, horror movies and movies like Dead Alive and Brain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. I, in the beginning, I, I watched more of the traditional horror films, I guess, and I loved uh, you know Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth, and especially Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, but then I, I remember the first time I saw. A, a Especially uh, brain dead or dead alive, as you call it here, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. and it was like an eye opener for me that you could be so so out there and so gory, but still it's just a fun film. Definitely. Uh, and I remember that combination; it just struck, you know, it just stuck with me. And and uh, that was uh, that, and of course, the Evil Dead's are very important, and I love that those films growing up. And yeah, I remember the first time I saw those films and just be able to be able to laugh and discuss it at the same time. That was a new feeling. Mm-hmm. When did you know, well, like... You've got th- some amazingly crazy kills in these films. It's just... It is. It's hilarious. A lot of the stuff that happens in this whole thing. Anybody that likes that kind of horror humor is... Uh, the one zombie from the beginning who's... His guts get caught on the on the car door lock. It's That's just one example of amazing kills and all these different things that go on. Just the... When he says it's it's not his arm, it's Satan's arm. It's just hilarious stuff. Yeah, no, thank you, and and, and we take great pride in uh, trying to come up with new k- ways to kill people and zombies. And uh, I'm sure you, you notice I have a fascination for intestines and what <laughs> you can do with them. Um, mm-hmm. So that's always fun to sit up, uh, sit and, and and cook up with the uh, new ways. So because it, it is it is an important ingredient to be able to surprise and shock people when it comes to that part as well. Mm-hmm. Now, um, when did you, uh, you know, when you were watching those fi- uh, those films as a kid and stuff, when did you decide, like, this is what I want to do? I want to be a director and I want to make these movies. Um, it wasn't that, it wasn't at that point because uh, in Norway, especially where I'm from, I'm from the very, very, you know, tip of the, in the north. It's, uh, I, I, I mean, we had like one director maybe ever coming out of that before me. Um and it's a very blue collar town. And I mean, it's not back then, especially it's changed a lot since then, but back then you, 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 you know, you're not going to suddenly one day say, I'm going to be a director. <laughs> I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it take it takes a little, I mean, I tried a different thing. I am actually, uh, I went to plumbing school and I realized I would have been the worst plumber ever in the history of man. Um, and then I studied it and I kept falling asleep in every lecture. Um, and I just realized at that point, hey, what I, I, I just got to do the one thing that I'm really that, that, that I burn for and that, that I love. And, and I worked at a video store for many years as well in my hometown. And 
I knew, I, I guess a deep down, I knew for a long time that's what, what I dreamt of doing, but it, it, was, it, it took me a while to understand that. So uh, it was in my that's, mid-20s where I finally went out and, and just started studying it. That's really impressive. So you go from this town, sounds like just a small, like you mentioned, a blue-collar town. What, how do you get into, into, into filmmaking? Because it sounds, I mean, it sounds like you really came from a place where this just almost wasn't even possible. And uh, it doesn't sound like you came from, like some people that get into film, they've got all kinds of big money or they've just come from LA, they've got people in the family. So how did you make it? Well, it's, you know, it's, I had a, I had a, you know, there's, there's, there were people I knew that went and studied film and television, but that was, they ended up doing television gigs and, and working uh, as an editor on, you know, random shows in, in, in Norway. Uh, so there was a, I knew there was a way into the industry, but still at the time when I decided to study film and television, because that was the, what it was called, uh, film and television, I, I, I didn't know that I was going to come out being a director. I mean, you, I dreamt about it, sure, but is it more like a general education? And I actually went, mm-hmm. I did a little bit of studying in Norway, and then I went to Australia to study because in Norway, they, they really help you if you want to go abroad and study, and they give you money, and they give you a great loan. And I decided to get away as far as I could and just and just try. And, and then when you get there and you start getting into these courses and you discover what you're good at and what you're not good at, and slowly I just became this, I guess, the leader of this, this group. Uh, and I, I still, to this day, the people that I met there, my DOP, uh, my production designer, my producer – and my my cameraman, they were guys that we just formed this team in school, and and we just grew up together w- within that. And um, yeah, there was you know yeah, there's a lot of luck involved, a lot of things clicking into place at the right time, and um, and we were lucky. I I did it like a tiny short while I was on holiday once. It was a spoof on Kill Bill, and it was just two minutes. Oh no, actually no, two or oh, four minutes. Um, and this was before YouTube. Uh, uh, and we just posted it online, and then I went back and did my last semester. And while I was there, it somehow exploded on, online. I mean, like people were sending it through emails, and it became like this thing. And I realized, okay, we actually have a shot, a way in. If we can make this film, we, because it's already established in people's minds, and it became like a thing in Norway. And um, then we just went home. I went to my hometown, and I, me and my producer started collecting money, or getting money from carpenters, electricians, I mean, anybody we knew had cash, <laughs> basically, or mm-hmm. a lot of it, and were unwilling to invest. And somehow we, we made this film and, uh, for no money, and it became a surprise hit in Norway. And after that, we had some money, and then we went and did Dead Snow. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Oh, and it must be so wonderful. And that's just amazing. And it must be so wonderful to have those friends in your life still that you are working with and talking with about all this. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, uh, I mean, we're we're a, a great, you know, great uh, group of friends, and we have a lot of fun. And I didn't, you know, for Hansel and Gretel, for example, I uh, I didn't get a chance to bring them with me because the studio wanted me to bring in other people, and it's complicated. But mm-hmm. so it's very, it was very good going back to Dead Snow with Snow with all my guys again and just having fun again. Mm-hmm. What what was that transition like going from uh, you know independent film to uh, doing like a, a studio film? It was very um, interesting. To, I mean, I, I had great producers, uh, Will Farrell, Adam McKay, and the guys, you know, produced it. Uh, and me and Jeremy and Gemma, the cast, we got along great. Uh, uh, and I'm proud of the I'm proud of the film and what it did, and it became a hit. You can uh, it did a lot of money, but at the same time, it the end product is is very different from the script I wrote uh, and the film I thought I was mm-hmm. going to make. And but that's how what I guess what happens. Uh, there's so much money involved, there's so many people, and just, there's testing the film, there's focus groups, and it's about making, uh, it's, you know, uh, some, uh, the, the original script for Hansel and Gretel was very similar to Dead Snow 2 in a way, in tone and feel and gore and humor, but eventually, uh, we, you know, that they, they had to make something safer than that, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. So it was, a, it was a big learning process for me, and I'm very happy I did it, and I want to I want to do more films over here, but uh, I learn a lot. Um, I, I go in wiser next time. Yeah. Is that frustrating at all when uh, you write something and then uh, it keeps getting changed? 
It was frustrating at the time. Uh, uh, it was. I mean, it, but at the same time, um, it's just it's just how it works, I guess. It's just mm-hmm. the studio. It's the system, and and it's so much money involved that I understand that people want to be safe and they want to know they can get their money back and or, well, at least as much as they can know. But it's just it, it's just a big industry, uh, obviously, and um, it was a, a lot to learn from me in the first time. But you know, next time going in, I'll, I'll be. Uh, I'll know much more how to maneuver it and how to work within that system for sure. Mm-hmm. And without a doubt, just having that experience is going to build up your contacts and open doors for you that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I used uh, uh, I used some of the special effects guys from Hansel and Gretel that did the troll. They actually came in and did the Russian zombies for us on Dead Snow Two. And yeah, you meet people. I mean, and the mixers that did Hansel and Gretel did Dead Snow Two for a lot less money than they normally would have done and the sound design team. And that's why we have a great sound. I mean, we, this, we have such powerful sound in the film. And um, so, yeah, like you said, you, you make friends and, uh, and then you bring them on to the next thing, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, that must be a lot of fun for them too, to get away from, you know, like you said, the, the kind of toned down studio environment where it's uh, more mainstream, that they can have more fun doing their thing. Yeah, I think they had a lot of fun doing Dead Snow too. Um and but yeah, it's uh they they again, you 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 always want to work with people you like and you get along with and you have fun with and that goes both ways. So so uh, that's why often what happens when you make movies, the more movies you make, the bigger the kind of the family gets and and you want to work with the same people again if you had a great time the first time. Mhm. Would you like to stay within uh, the horror genre? Is that the the kind of films you enjoy making and want to make? I I'm, I would I'm sure I'll make more of them, uh, but I want to try different things as well. I'm attached to a sci-fi right now, um, and I think that will be my next film. It's called What Happened to Monday, uh, and, and Numi Rapaz is attached to Star. Oh, cool. Um, but um. Uh, yeah, and then, I, I, you know, you as a filmmaker, you always want to try to do new things, and uh, you don't want to do, keep doing the same thing over and over again. That's part of the reason why I said no to directing Hansel and Gretel 2. Uh, I just, I wrote the script, but I didn't, I, want, I don't want to direct it, because I did Dead Snow 1 and 2, a sequel, you know, and, 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 and then Hansel and Gretel in the middle, so I figured it would be fun to, to try new stuff, and I've always, always been a big sci-fi geek as well, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing What are some it. of your favorite sci-fis that you kind of want to go in the vein of? Well, it's, uh, I mean, this is more like in the vein of Children of Men and Source Code. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a little bit more serious than what I normally do, which I like, and it's a good challenge. Um, but I, I grew up, I, I'm, a, I'm a big, 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 big Star Wars geek. Um, and so I'm Ooh. very, uh, I was very um, intrigued by the new teaser. I thought it yes. looked very promising. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I've it, heard. I've heard people are receptive to it, though. It, it, yes. I think it looks a lot better than the uh, the last trilogy. I, was I very, hope so. Yeah, I was very impressed by the trailer too. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. Episode seven. What did you think of episode one, two, and three? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, there was some good stuff in there. It was just. Um, I, I'm a big fan also in, in practical effects and practical feel yeah. things. And, and, and uh, for me, Star Wars was, every, you know, I love those creatures. I love Jabba, the original Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. I love the world that they created. It felt used and dirty and dusty. And yeah. I guess the prequels would more, I mean, my nephews love it, my young nephews. So it, it, it feels a little bit more like children movies, to be honest. But, yeah. um, mm-hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, but I'm very intrigued by this new stuff. I am. Yeah. Do you think, um, because it kind of seems like a lot of practical effects are starting to make a comeback, and uh, people even talk about that. They'll be like, you know, this movie is using all practical effects. Do you think a lot of that is because uh, people like yourself who grew up watching those kind of movies are now making movies and want to bring it back to the the stuff that they enjoy? Yeah, maybe. I also think it's just about, you know, CGI has taken so many big steps the last decade uh, or decades and I think at a time it was just overusing it because it's a new cool tool and it's very easy to use. Uh, and I think now we're finding a, a more like a, a healthy balance. Simply as that is, I always felt. I mean, I always feel like CGI is the best when you can combine it to to practical effects, practical stuff, mm-hmm. and where you don't notice it, it's even there. We use a lot of it in Dead Snow one and two, especially. 
And in two, we have a great combination, I think, of it. And um, so, yeah, I, I just think in the gut, there's something you feel, you don't even feel it, but it's, yeah, it's just somehow you know it's CGI, no matter how good it is. And it, it disconnects mm-hmm. you a little bit. Um, so I, I always uh, I always love and prefer the, the, the real stuff as long as it's possible. I mean, that's why we, for Hansel and Gretel, we actually built an animatronic troll and that we had an actor inside, but the face was all animatronic. And, and it looked amazing, I thought. And, and it just had this different feel to it than, a, than a, what a CGI troll would, would feel like. Yeah, some we always bring up on the show. I always think there's a... Uh... There's like uh, you could tell like the weight's not there if it's uh, a lot of heavy CGI. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You brought up uh, the Evil Dead films and in, uh, in Army of Darkness, and uh, you even referenced it in, in the first movie. You know how you're kind of the same setup in the desolated cabin, and uh, in the second movie, um, which I think is a great opening, how uh, how the character gets his arm sewn back on. Is that also kind of a, an ode to Evil Dead Two? How he's got an arm that's uh, that's kind of a he can't control totally. Well, uh, I'm, uh, obviously, a lot of people will make that assumption. But when we when we when we when we got the idea of cutting his arm off in the first one, we didn't ever thought exactly, that, yeah. we actually didn't think of the idea of putting something back. Then when we mm-hmm. if we ever did a sequel, it was more like a, we we. Um, yeah, I'm sure we were influenced by it, yes, but it was more like, uh, how can we do this in a fun way? How can we add to Martin? What can we make him, how can we make him interesting again? And then we, we just, you know, thought about the, the, the opening fight and chase and, um, and the truck hitting Herzog. And then it, it just spun off from that. And we thought that, uh, because again, this, this, this sequel just came out with us throughout the years, just riffing and throwing ideas at each other. And finally we decided we have to write this. We, <laughs> we're, we're, this is really funny. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I'm sure it, in the back of our heads it was there, but at the same time it was also about how can we make our hero funny and interesting and, and add an, an extra element to, to to everything. I really think it's a brilliant yeah. uh, part of the film, and I think actually it's kind of a nice coincidence where it totally fits in with the movie and it's totally original, but at the same time you can you can kind of see the little connection. So I, I think it fits perfect. Oh, thank you. Um, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Even when I saw the trailer, I was like, that's a really great idea. I've never seen that, you know, where the character cuts his arm off and then he gets it sewn back on. And it was, uh, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. And, and and really what makes it work so well is also Vega, the actor, who just, he, he, he does a really good job at it and, and how he portrays it, fighting him and then controlling it. It's, he's, he's very good with that internal struggle as well. And, uh, yeah, he just, he just really sells it. Mm-hmm. With you know, with all so many zombie movies out there, uh, what do you think it is about uh, Dead Snow and Dead Snow Two that does make it stand out? Because um, it does. You know, a lot of people talk about it. Yeah, I, I get. I, I hope one thing. I mean, obvious. There's an obvious reason that we have Nazi zombies. I guess they're. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're. they're, they're it, it's just when the first one come, it came. It was. I think we were the first one since that. Since. Um, uh, shockwaves, mm-hmm. um, or maybe outposts. No, outposts came after us. Uh, but it was just at that time, it 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 it, it was new, certainly in the zombie genre or, or a newish. But um, I think hopefully it's the combination of the humor and the gore and the action, and it's it's it, we really it, people seem to respond to to the balance of humor and gore and action, and uh, because it's it's hard, you know, it's. If you go too far with the humor, it becomes a spoof or a comedy. And if you go too far the other way, it's not really anything. But so it's all we have a lot of talk about tone when we wrote it and when we cut it and how far do you go with the jokes and how when do you hold back? And I think hopefully that's the because a lot of a lot of people that don't like zombie movies have said that they really enjoy Dead Snow too. And I I, I think and hope it it is because of because of the sense of fun that they have. Mm-hmm. That's some, uh, you definitely do different things with it. Like you even discuss uh, through the American kid that this is not the normal type of zombie. That's this kind of zombie. And obviously, there's things that happen throughout the movie with the arms and the touching and what happens with people. That is very, very different from your average zombie. And I have to say, it doesn't hurt that they're Nazi zombies. I think that's kind of a thing. And I did want to ask about that. Is that in Europe? I would think the reaction to a Nazi zombie is probably different from an American reaction to a Nazi zombie. So what 
What do people think of that there? Is it like a taboo thing? Is it just fun, just like we would have it over here? Um, I, I, to be honest, when we, when we made it, the first one, we were sure in Norway that there was going to be a reaction and people uh, kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, like it, that it was going to be taboo and people were going to talk, uh, write articles about it. And it, it's still a sensitive subject, I guess, to a certain extent, but... For some reason, that never happened. It, it, people, I think people just realized what kind of stuff they were doing, and there was no harm in it. And I don't, th- I, I can't remember having a single negative reaction to it in, in Norway. I, 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 it's hard for me to answer in the rest of the world, but I know it's it's playing in in Germany too. Um, and I think just people people will see the humor, just see the humor in it. I, I hope. Um, but yeah, it, surprisingly few have been uh, offended by it. <laughs> yeah. How fun was it to put a, a a zombie Nazi in a tank? Uh, it was a lot of fun, <laughs> a lot of fun. Very dangerous to, sh- to just deal with a tank and and use a tank and have stunts with a tank. Uh, uh, but it was something, and it cost a lot of money getting a tank there. We shot in Iceland, and in fact, Iceland has never have never had a tank on its soil in the history of that country. Hmm. So this is the first oh, tank wow. ever there. We we got it from Sweden on boat. Um, and it was, but I, I fought for it. I fought hard for it, and I knew it would, it would add the, an extra element to this film. And, and when we first had it, we just wanted to use it as much as we could. Um, but it was tricky. And Iceland is very protective with their nature and their moss and the trees, and that combined with a forty-ton tank can be a little tricky at times. <laughs> but um, no, it was fun. It was, and it really, uh, it really tied the room together. <laughs> Definitely. Nope. Um, how much of the movie, uh, like the first movie, is filmed with uh, with actual snow? I'm sorry, what? Uh, how much of the first movie is filmed within uh, actual snow? The first film was all shot in actual snow. We shot mm-hmm. it uh, an hour from my hometown in the north of Norway, in the mountains, and it was hell getting on to an offset, and we had to use snowmobiles to get on set every day. And But we, sh- we shot it basically where I grew up, and... Uh, it's really tough shooting in that environment, but it, you can really, it, it really, it's really is worth it, I think. And I always loved winter movies as well. I always, it just had this extra element, and the thing obviously is a favorite. And mm-hmm. uh, it's just, uh, but it was the first one was a pain in the ass to shoot. It was so hard, uh, <laughs> and it kept snowing and it kept snowing, and uh, so many days. We had to start the day by digging up props and equipment from the day before. Uh, it was it was a, a long time since we had that much snow. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it was fun. It was worth it. And the, in the sequel, we we had to relocate from Norway to Iceland because it's too expensive to shoot in Norway, especially with the budget we had and the money we had. So we mm-hmm. moved it to Iceland. And we made it into a summer film instead. And but we shot the opening though in my hometown again, and just to get some snow in there and and and, and tie the films together. Mm-hmm. This, uh, yeah, I know you said you know it's hard to because you had to dig up the thing stuff, but uh, what effect did that have on the on the zombie makeup? It, it is tricky. Uh, certainly, is very tricky, and it it, uh, it adds again. You know, you're you're required to do touch ups all the time, normally, but when you add minus ten or fifteen degrees Celsius to that. It's it's hard and the glue is not working properly and one of the biggest problems with the first one was actually the blood kept freezing up, so our practical mm. blood worked. That's why we had to use more CGI blood than I thought we would, uh, because uh, sometimes it was just so cold and the pumps weren't working or the because a lot of the fake blood is based mainly on syrup, and that doesn't work well with with the extreme cold either. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it just certainly complicates things. Mm-hmm. I guess you could make it out of alcohol. Alcohol doesn't freeze, but that probably wouldn't be too wise either. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I mean, sure, I, I'm sure the extras will have more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. What? <laughs> when did you realize that uh, people started to see this movie in other countries and it started to be uh, popular in America? It, 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 you know, it, 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 uh, we we hoped it would when we the first time we ever screened That's No One was at Sundance and. The reactions were really, really positive, and we thought, all right, we, may, we might have something here that could play outside Norway. And yeah, it took. We sold it eventually to many countries, and it just started spreading out. And we started looking at IMDb and discussion forums, and and then we, these uh, these uh, you know like we we kept coming on to these uh, you know the best ten best zombie films of the decade and the best zombie films out there. 
And we, we, yeah, it just it took time, but slowly we just we got mentioned. There was a lot of so there's a lot of talk about the film, I guess, in in, in the horror community. Um, and we then you know many years later we finally decided, all right, let's uh, let's use this and let's try to make another one and let's expand the universe. And it it's uh, it was a new you know it's obviously a new feeling for us to have dedicated fans of what we're doing and and people you know we kept seeing all these people having tattoos with herzog sending them to us and i don't know if that's creepy or cool but <laughs> having a zombie nazi tattooed on your leg but <laughs> yeah we, 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 it just it took a while and, and it spread out slowly but surely and it was fun it's obviously a lot of fun and it's uh it's strange as well but we we're re- very proud of it and the fact that it has become this thing i guess within the horror community mm-hmm uh, did you name him after uh, Werner Herzog? <laughs> I can't. You know what? I can't remember. I, I think we mentioned it. We actually mentioned it. Can we name him Herzog? Because we already have a director named Herzog. I don't know. We just we, we went through names. So just somehow it just it, it does have a nice ring to it. You know? Yes, it does. It definitely does. <laughs> uh, you you said about the, the first screening, and you know when you started to watch the movies with with audiences. Uh, was that uh? Was there any pressure there to to see how people would react to your film, or was it a lot of fun for you? Or? Uh, it's of course very nerve wracking, mm-hmm. and especially before the first one. Um, and uh, I remember, yeah, the first one in Sundance, we were it was a huge line, and we never screened to a crowd. Um, and there was actually, I remember it was a big fight in the in the line because there was some tickets and people didn't get tickets or whatever it was. And right before I was going in to see the film, I just saw this guy sitting in the curb bleeding all over the curb. <laughs> and I thought that's a good that's a good fit for our film. Uh, I, I took it as a good wow. omen. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it, but people really, I love. You know what? I I really love the laughter you get when people know they shouldn't be laughing. That's my favorite laughter. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> um, we tried getting, especially in the sequel, we tried getting them as many of them as we could. Uh, and I remember people telling me, my producers, you can't, you can't kill children, you can't have zombie sex, blah blah blah. But in, with the right tone, you can do anything. And uh, and I love, I love that feeling where you can just look around you and you see people having that shocked expression in their face, uh, but they still are laughing, and that's a, that's a good thing, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I have to say the ending, the romantic ending. Yeah, a little gross. <laughs> I was pretty yeah. gross. Was we great. actually uh, we shot it a lot more gross. We had a we had a whole segment within the car as well with with a lot of details <laughs> when it came, came to the segment. Graphic. It, it Will actually, there be a director's cut of Dead Snow too? <laughs> Eventually, there will. I mean, we will have we will have to release that scene. Um, but it was. It was too much even for me. Not in the fact that it was that like, gross, yeah. but it was just like I actually, I actually think the scene is now somewhat romantic, and the details just kind of ruin it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, we did, we did go even further there as well. But we, we that's the one place where we cut back a little bit. Mm-hmm. This is a true story. When I was watching uh, the, the, the second movie, and uh, my mom actually came into uh, the living room when I was right at the very end and saw that scene. And uh, but my mom is a big horror movie fan, so it actually made her want to watch the film. So. <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, she thought it, you know, this this looks like my kind of film. So yeah, that, that's I'm sure you had a fun upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. yeah, Neil's, Neil's mom's pretty weird. She's yeah. a nice lady and all, but well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. Going and now to... we have the meal we all love today. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I went to see Night of the Living Dead with her at the drive-in. I think when I was about six. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's good times. Do you remember the first horror movie you did see? Um, the first horror movie? I wonder if there was one of the classics with my parents, like Omen or The Shining or something like that. Uh, good I don't remember. Way to start. Hmm? Good way to start. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, And I also watched Friday the Friday 13th at a very young age. We got a illegal copy at a VHS and we gather a bunch of friends to watch it. Um, but um, I, I watched a lot of horror movies when I was a kid. Uh, I had a brother that was 10 years older than me, hmm, and he kept bringing similar. these films back when he was 15 and I was five. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from uh, and I and I saw a lot of things in a very uh, early age. Mm-hmm. 
That's very similar to me, because my brother's nine years older, and so we actually, a lot of brothers fight, but we didn't, because there's such a big age difference. And I yeah. remember uh, in the 80s, like, it was hard to get, so Evil Dead, actually, I think was the same way, it was like a bootleg copy, and uh, he had it, and every, it was like the end thing for everyone to watch, uh, Evil Dead, and I remember watching that at a very young age uh, on a, a really scratchy bootleg uh, VHS copy. No, it was part of the part of the fun back then, charm about it, but it's all gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another thing we have talked a lot about on the show is the combination, like you'd brought up, of a uh, horror movie and comedy, and exactly how you're saying, like if you do too much uh, horror, it's different and whatnot. But um, a lot a lot of people we've had on the show who have made those different movies always say you really have to, uh, you know, keep the the horror in it horrific and not make it too much of a joke, and so. I assume that was something, uh, you know, you really uh, took notice of when you were making the movie. Yeah, yeah, especially in the first one. And again, the the second one, I get it, it is not a horror film anymore. I can't really, it's more of a splatter. Yeah. Uh, produced, mm-hmm. but, uh, but yeah, you got to still be able to shock people. And, and it's got to be some sense of dread. Or at least it's got to feel real. And again, that comes, uh, not feel real, but it's got to, you got to care about the people. And you got to be, it's got to be a tension and that again brings in the actors, and they, you know, our, our lead guy, he 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 acts like he's acting in a drama film. You know, he mm-hmm. he reacts yeah. like he would. Uh, he's a great straight man. Yeah, and and he just he he um, he makes it more. You know, he he helps in, in bringing it in, and so it, it it keeps it away from just being a joke. Um, and yeah, but it's always about balance. It is, and certain times we can go too far, and we cut back on it. And um, but it's it's something we talk about a lot during, during shooting. I did want to comment that the characters are so likable. The casting is great, and it really, in any film, if you don't have likable characters, likable cast that can portray those characters, the film will sink. So, really excellent group of people. Yeah. No. Thank you. And and, and it's all you know, in Norway. I guess here, if you're going to cast a horror film, there, you, there's certain people you can't get, and certain people that won't do horror. And in Norway, we don't have that big, big of a film community, and and people really want to work no matter what, and they want to try new things. And so these actors that I mean, like the guy that plays the psychic zombie, you know, the the, the zombie that gets mauled throughout the film, mm-hmm. uh, he's Which like one character. of Norway's finest actors. He <laughs> and wow. we just I just thought it would be fun to bring him in and not have him say a word, and people won't recognize him at all. And he really made that character something more than just you really actually really care for him. He's like a, a puppy dog yeah. almost. <laughs> yeah, that, I forgot to mention that. that's a great character. Mm-hmm. So much fun. Yeah, he brought, I mean, he's, he's right now he's off shooting a film with Tom Hardy and Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh wow! Um, so oh, it's, it's fantastic. And he's the guy we have as a as a, a psychic zombie. It's just in Norway, people really want to have fun, and I and you can really you can really cast great actors in these films, and it really ele- elevates it. I think. Yeah. This one I mentioned, uh, December 9th, it comes out here on DVD and Blu-ray, and um, uh, they actually sent us a copy to give away on the show here, Collector's Edition Blu-ray, and I noticed that it also has the international cut of the film, and uh, what is the difference between the U.S. Uh, release and the international cut? Well, it's just the international is a mix of languages, Norwegian and English, and we also, when we shot it, we made sure that all the Norwegian uh, scenes, we also did them in English, so... The Amer- English version is simply all American language. It's just, it's just a language thing. Okay, very cool. And uh, for yeah. people listening out there, all you have to do is uh, share this podcast you're listening to, and you'll be entered to win a copy of that on Blu-ray. So we want to thank you for uh, coming on here. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. Yeah, no, likewise, and, and thanks thanks for having me. And- Absolutely. It was great. Great time. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, and if pe- if people like Dead Snow... Uh, check out Dead Snow 2. It really is not just because you're on here. I had a great time watching it. It's just crazy. It's fun. It's a lot like Dead Alive, where it's just nonstop uh, madness, and it's uh, really over the top and silly and just a fun experience. This is Herschel Gordon Lewis. If you know who I am, God help you. If you don't know who I am, God help you. But what you're watching here or listening to is without your head, and I can tell you that. I have contributed to the loss of your head. So thank you for being there.